guys, this is Paige. I want to make this video about enduring until the end and how we must endure until the end to be saved. When Jesus Christ was speaking with the disciples, at one point they were like, what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? And he said, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved." What is Jesus Christ saying? There's going to be a lot of tribulation and times, but you need to endure until the end to be saved. Endurance is a very important quality of a child of God. We must endure until the end. A fruit of the Spirit is long-suffering. It's similar to endurance. What is long-suffering? It's having or showing patience in spite of troubles. It's sticking it out even when it's very difficult. Christianity, what Christianity is, is difficult, right? It's the narrow road. It's not easy. God knows this. Now, why is it narrow? Because you must repent and have the Holy Spirit. You must live in repentance and not practice sin unto death. And also you'll be attacked by Satan in the mind and through people. And you'll be tested in ways of refinement. He'll refine you. He'll test your faith. And also he'll test you in ways of willful sin, sin unto death. And that alone makes it very narrow, very difficult. When you become a born-again Christian, you receive the Holy Spirit, you get in covenant with God. It's a promise you have with him. It's a promise. Your promise to his, him is, I will keep your commandments. And then his promise to you is, I'll be with you, I'll protect you, I'll love you, I'll take care of you. And I will forgive you and you will go to heaven plus other blessings, things like that. But that's ma mainly what the covenant is. This is a commitment to God. It's not just like a one day thing or a, a month thing where you're like, I want to follow God. Now, now I'm not anymore. It's a commitment, a lifetime commitment to him. And he takes that covenant very seriously. And we need to take it very seriously too. Let's go and look into the parable of the sower. <clears throat> Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth the way that which was sown in his heart. That is he which receiveth seed by the wayside. So those that receive seed by the wayside, they hear the word of God and then they don't accept it. Satan catches it away from them. But he that receiveth the seed into stony place is the same as he that heareth the word and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. So the, the seed in the stony places, this is, the seed is like the word of God. The ground or the stony places or the wayside, that's like the heart condition of someone. The stony places is like people who receive it and, and then they're happy about it, but because they face tribulation, they don't endure. These are the people 
This is the parable of the sower. It's it's like a an example of the people who, who will not go to heaven and what happens with them. People who do not become a good tree. You see how the people with this in the stony places, they're like, oh, I'll follow God, and then they can't they can't endure. They never become born again, though. He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. Another one, they, they can't, they're not going to repent, that they care more about money or things like this. They don't care about following God. But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. God's children who are born again become a good tree. The good ground is like your heart. The seed is like the word of God. You become a good tree and then you bear fruit. And you need to endure. Do you see the people in the stony places? The seed in the stony places? They couldn't endure. They couldn't stick it out. If you're God's child, you will face a lot of tribulation and persecution. Because once you receive the Holy Spirit, guess what? Satan's your enemy now. And he's not just going to be cool about you glorifying God. And this whole thing glorifies God, the difficulty of it. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. These are the words of Jesus Christ. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. So he's saying, if you hear what I say, and you do it, as in you repent, you receive the Holy Spirit, you do my will, you're wise, and you're on the rock. Who is the rock? Jesus Christ is the rock. We build our foundation on him, right? You're like a tree on a rock symbolically. But people who hear his sayings and don't do them, they don't live in repentance. They don't receive the Holy Spirit. They just hear it. They're like a house on the sand. It's interesting because the winds blow, the floods come. What is that? That's the tribulations. That's God allowing Satan to test you and tempt you. Satan is the prince of the power of the air. It's like it's like storms that come to you. And you must endure and stay on the rock. But people who are not on the rock to begin with, they're just on the sand. Those are the people who never repent. They're just on the sand. God's children must stay on that rock. No matter what you do, no matter what doubts you get or anything like this, you must stay in repentance. No matter what Satan throws at you, it's very important. You must stay with him. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Do you see? Firmly rooted in him. You know what God was showing me? He would tell me that I have to stay with him. And he would tell me I can never give up. No matter how hard it is, I can't ever give up. That's what he showed me. It was very strong. He showed me that. He's like, promise me you never give up. No matter what. It's a good message for all God's children. 
Because guess what? Satan's going to make you want to give up. Even just in my calling at times, I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. Because Satan, when he attacks me, he comes at me hard. He attacks me hard. And God allows it. I'll get nightmares. He'll come at me in the mind, through people. All my weaknesses and things. And then you have to resist him in terms of willful sin, sin unto death. I'd be like, it's so difficult at times. It really is. See, a lot of people who claim Jesus Christ, you know, on YouTube, people that preach about him, even people that preach repentance, guess what? A lot of people don't live Jesus Christ. They don't live the Christian life. They just preach it. A lot of people, though, they have those false doctrines, faith alone, nonsense. It's not true faith. That's against Jesus Christ's words. And they're not born again to begin with. But there's even people that preach repentance and they're not even living in repentance. That's why I'm saying if you're truly of God and you live in repentance, you're so rare. I'm very rare in this world. I know this. That's why God would show me I'm, I'm like the lucky four-leaf clover. That's what you are. People who preach Jesus Christ in repentance, but then don't live him. They don't live in repentance are not the four-leaf clover. They're just hypocrites. People who preach Jesus Christ and don't repent and don't live in repentance, you're better off not even preaching him. Because you don't want to be a hypocrite. It's a high responsibility. Especially where God's placed me. Now, God has a lot of mercy and grace. If you fall, you can repent, right? But we are not to live in it. But even just with me, if I started falling, say to like a sexual sin, like masturbation or something, it would affect my walk. I wouldn't be able to hear from God as much. And it would affect my anointing. I know this. And I don't want to hurt God and do those things. Now there's grace and mercy if I ever messed up, right? But a lot is required of me. A lot. I, I would not want to do it at times because of all the attacks on me. It's biblical. There's people in the Bible who didn't want to do it. When God was telling Moses, look, you're going to get my people out of Egypt and stuff. Moses was like, well, uh, I can't speak well. So, you know, <laughs> And what did God say? He's like, who made man's mouth? I'll be with your mouth. He was upset. He was like, you're going to do it. So <laughs> look at Jonah. Jonah ran away. He's like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> God was like, yes, yes, you are. I'm chosen to do it. If I didn't do it, he'd push me to do it. Just, just the rewards God gives me. I know sometimes when I tell people God creates things just for me and he can create things just for you, they'll be like, who is this girl online just out of nowhere telling people God made movies for her? I know, but he did. Because I'm very rare. See, when you're alone, no one knows what you do except God and the demons and the angels and the devil. You know what I'm saying? No one's going to know what you're doing but God. And that is where God is looking. Christianity is a lifestyle. A lot of people know that. They're like, well, no one sees me, so... I could just sin all I want right now and no one's going to know. Well, God knows. And I know how I've lived. I know the level of repentance I've lived in. I know the thorns he put on me. I know my fellowship with him, how I've served him, how he's, you know, worked through me to serve him. And so when he tells me that and he makes me know that and he makes sure I know it, I'm like, yeah, you did. Because I'm very rare, you see. 
We need to live Jesus Christ. You need to live it. But also enjoy all his mercy and grace too. See what God's doing through me is he's showing people we need to live in repentance, his ways, sin unto death we should not be doing, but also he's teaching people his mercies. Like about music or movies or things like that, things that are not sin to him, that he actually speaks through a lot of it and creates it. It's very important to learn God's mercies especially when it comes to enduring. You see, the Pharisee doctrines put so many burdens on people, and people, it will be so hard for them to endure. For example, say you thought television was a sin. You could never watch television or any movies or anything. Now, year one, you'd probably be like, okay. And then what about year two, three, four, five? You're going to be like, what? Is this really wrong? It's unrealistic. It's not realistic <laughs> to live that way. Same with like jewelry. You can't put like an earring in your ear. It's just from Satan to put burdens on people, to burden them down. So what do they do? They're like, you know what? I'm sick of this. I'm not following God anymore. I'm so burdened down. That's what he wants. These doctrines don't come from him. God wants people to know that. He doesn't like it that there's people who think he's a Pharisee, I'm telling you. And it's so like when you first come to God, there's so many Pharisee doctrines around that you'll be confused. This has taken me years to learn this. Many years with uh, with strong repentance, you know, serving him. Think, and now he's rewarded me and shown me these things and created things just for me. I'm telling you, some of the things he's made me are so popular in the world. And he would make sure he that I knew that he made it for me. And I'd be like, what? I better do my calling that you would do that. It's true. A lot is expected of me to do it. And he's also showing me how rare I am. So many people, wolves in sheep's clothing. Just wolves in sheep's clothing. Everywhere, they're everywhere. If you're a sheep, you're going to be surrounded by these people. They're not really born again. If you are, though, you're the lucky four-leaf clover. Okay, and what did, what did Paul say? But call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of afflictions, partly whilst you were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst you became companions of them that were so ye used. For ye had compassion of me and my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward, for ye have need of patience, that ye have done the will of God, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. And if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So what does it say? If you draw back and leave God, God will not have pleasure in you and you won't go to heaven. But the thing is, if you're born again and you try to leave him, he will discipline you and try to get you back to him. But there's people who are born again Christians who have left God. And they just live in sin now. This is a free will thing. You have a choice. If you didn't have a choice, it wouldn't glorify him. You know what God would show me? Show me like his mercies. That's what he likes to do. When he shows me how he speaks through movies and things like that, like Edward Scissorhands, for example, 
what because he speaks through these things, it glorifies him to speak through it. He wants to be glorified through it. Even when people are trying to use it to make Christians look bad. You know, Edward Scissorhands, in, in that movie, I see how the devil was trying to put things in there to make Christians look bad. That's what he does. But God's so high, then he puts something in there to edify his children. For example, there's this woman in the movie, and, and Edward is there. Edward's such like a kind, nice guy, right? He has some anger issues, albeit, but... And he's not born again, of course, but just in the movie. And there's this woman, she comes to him, she's like, he's of the devil. That's, he's of the devil, just based on his appearance. And she's very, like, rude and mean and nasty. And I was like, oh, that, that's not a Christian. That's a Pharisee over there. But what is that? That's Satan trying to make people think Christians are Pharisees. And they're mean and they judge other, by, other people by their appearance. See what I'm saying? If people saw that movie, they'd be like, oh, Christians, uh, they're so judgmental and nasty when Edward was so nice. You see, he tries to put those things in there. I see things in there. He tried to put in there. But then God put a good message in there. And at the same time, he's showing me his grace and mercies. He's like, you can watch these things, even though there's sin in it. It's just a story to me. It took me so long to learn this. And then you know what he would show me? He'd be like, you should smile because of my mercies. Very beautiful. You see, if God never gave you mercy, it would not glorify him. That's what the whole Pharisee thing Pharisee demons or people who have these demons or people who are Pharisees, they don't get that. They don't understand that. And they don't love. What did Paul say? He was like, if I don't love, I've become like a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. What is a cymbal? It's like, you know, on drums, there's a cymbal. When they, they hit it, it sounds really noisy. If you hit it really hard, that's what they sound like to God. People who don't have love. Really noisy and bad to the ear. And now not, this is not in scripture, but it's wisdom from the spirit. If you have love, you sound like a beautiful, clear bell. That's what God would tell me I, I sound like. It's like, when are the Pharisees going to learn being cruel and wicked to people displeases God? They sound like a clanging cymbal. All the people who came to me, treating me like garbage on my videos and just in general, that's Pharisee demons. That doesn't please God. If you don't love people and you're not kind to them, you're not even in repentance. You don't understand it. Because repentance, part of repentance is you got to love people, man. And loving people means you must be kind to them, have mercy on them, care for them. Very important to God, kindness. They don't get it, you see, and then they put all these burdens on people. That's Pharisees. People would think... What is the image of Satan? What is his image? Well, he's a sinner, right? He's wicked. He's a sinner, a murderer, a liar. But he's not just some lost sinner. He's a Pharisee. That's his image. He's a Pharisee. He would love for Christians to become Pharisees too. That's what he tries to do with putting all those Pharisee doctrines in your mind. They literally come and condemn me, God's daughter, who's doing his will, and think they please God. Very uh, blinded, the Pharisees, see? Very important, kindness, love, mercy to God, very important.
And when people do evil to you, you can't go do evil to them. That's part of repentance. It's part of resisting Satan. It's difficult, right? When people treat you like dirt and you can't do anything evil back. Now, you could rebuke their wickedness, but you can't be evil back to them, right? Now, we're not going to be perfect on that one, but you can't live in that. You have to repent if you ever say something mean or nasty. You see, that's a part of repentance. Repentance in itself is very difficult. Sins unto death. God knows this. He doesn't want people under all these other burdens, not from him. And what did Paul say in the thing I just said? When you were a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, there's going to be people and they're going to try to make fun of you, persecute you, treat you badly. But I'll tell you something. If you're God's child, no one will be making a fool out of you. They will be embarrassed for their own behavior. And that's what God does. No one will make a fool of me. You know the woman that makes videos on me? This woman. I'll tell you something about her. This woman watched me for years. I would talk to her. She's been watching me for years while I've been preaching on repentance. Okay? And... When I started telling people that God speaks through movies, she came and said, like, I'm unwell in the mind. Then she came and told me her mother thinks I'm sad. I'm unwell in the mind. You know, things God would never say. It's just demons treating me like dirt. And then I blocked her because I'm not going to have people treating me badly. And then she went and made videos against me. And she, she's a follower of Renee Rowland who literally teaches people you can do anything, go to heaven, but you'll just like lose rewards. Like you can live in sin. Literally came out of her own mouth. Do you see what I'm saying here? It's Pharisee demons in her doing that. She is like an example of, it's like an example of what I talked about. I was like, God, this is like proof that it's Pharisees. All this time preaching repentance, we must turn from sin. She didn't say one thing. Once I started saying God speaks through movies, she's like, oh, God wouldn't speak through satanic entertainment and this. And then she doesn't even believe in repentance. She doesn't even think you need to repent. I was like, you see? It's what they do. She doesn't even live in repentance. She's not even born again. And, and then she's like saying, God would never speak through the movie. <laughs> they strain out a gnat. I could even use her as an example for, for teaching and, and use it for good. That's how high God is. He wanted me to know it was her. I was like, I can't believe that. Telling you. And I say this in love because if she doesn't take that stuff down, she's in big trouble. She needs to become born again. She would come to me telling me, I don't feel like the Holy Spirit. It doesn't feel like fire. Because you don't have it. I'm not saying everyone must feel it, but she definitely doesn't to come against me. Led by Pharisee demons, I'm telling you. And then saying this mutant, this is satanic or whatever. It's like, no, it's just stories to God. But then you, you support Renee Rowland, who says you can live in sin. These people are so confused in their mind. I'll tell you something about me. I'm a very smart person. Even before I came to God, I, I was doing good in school. I would get mostly A's. I'm very intelligent. Now, of course, now that I'm with God, all my wisdom comes from God, but he made me very smart. I know what's up. I know what's going on. I know what Satan does. It's a good quality of a leader. That's why God made me a leader. He's given me the qualities. I have the qualities that's needed in a leader. There's people, they think I'm, I'm proud, okay? But I'm not. I'm just confident. I have humbleness. God would never raise me like this if I was proud. And I give God all the glory. And he loves that. And in my heart, it's good. It's just, I just want to glorify him and help people. 
If you're proud, God won't raise you anywhere. He hates that. So it says, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. See how I said God gives us his righteousness? It's from him. No one's going to be treating you like a fool and get away with it. It's just true. It's justice, not unforgiveness. We're to forgive. We're not to do evil to people, right? But God will put justice on these things. Very displeasing to him. So we must endure until the end, right? We got to take it very seriously. It's a serious commitment from God. Very serious to him. He told me that. He was like, you can't ever give up. No matter what. Sometimes I feel like I don't want to do my calling anymore. It's very difficult. Because you know what, what I do when you don't see me on here? I'm fighting the devil. That's what I'm doing. I'm not living in sin. Now, I enjoy God's grace and mercies, but I'm fighting the devil. It's something all of us have to do when no one's watching because God is. You guys want to see something cool? You know, in the past, this was years ago, right? God had shown me like baking soda, <laughs> you know, and how he spoke through it. This was years ago. Like arm and hammer baking soda. <laughs> you see what it says there? The standard of purity. And he was showing me, that's like me. He was telling me, he's like, that's like me. You know, what does it say in the Bible? Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Arm and hammer. <laughs> I'm telling you, he speaks through these things. Now, when I tell people this stuff, I know people are going to think I'm weird and crazy, but I'm just here to glorify him and do what he wants me to do. You see, what God showed me too is there's like a red bow on it. You know how I was showing you guys the red bow or the red butterfly? How it represents like his righteousness. He would show me that. Like that thing he had made me when the man gave her this box. It was like a white box with a red bow. And inside there was a red dress. And that's like God giving me his righteousness. The red bow. And he was showing me that, the red bow. I was like, what? See, he gives us his righteousness. He wants us to smile because of his mercies. Very important to learn God's mercy so you can endure until the end. Satan doesn't want you enduring. He wants you burdened down with Pharisee doctrines. I'm just going to show you guys something pretty cool. You know that what I was just talking about where he gave her, you know, the red dress. Guess what her name is? The, the name of the girl whose name is, her name is Bella Thorne. Bella Thorne. What would God call me, Bella? You know, I've been telling people God's been calling me that for a while. Isabella means God is my oath. Bella means you're beautiful. Isabella is a bell. I'm a bell. I'm going to show you guys what God showed me the next day. I, I don't know if it was the next day, but after that, okay? It's just to confirm things, all right? How is that this store? And look at what's here. There's like a little unicorn right here, right? God shows me. This is how high God creates, okay? Some people won't be able to see it and they'll think it's foolishness, but I have to just do what God wants me to do. 
and he likes to be glorified through all things. But look at the unicorn right here. Someone put that there. He put that in their mind. What is it right next to? Minnie Mouse and Mickey Mouse, who I said God speaks through that to me. And there's Hello Kitty right there, red and white. What's on Hello Kitty? Bells and, you know, you got the candy cane with the red bow. You see she's wearing a red bow. Sometimes she wears pink, which means peace. But And then there you have Minnie Mouse up there with the, the white flower in her hair with scarves. Scarves mean protection. It's red and white, you see, the peppermint. Some people would think, no, that's not God. God doesn't do that. Yes, he does. Then my dad and I were in the car and we were going to eat. And he, he, he went and he parked right in front of this. I'm going to show you guys this. I'm just blurring out what it is because, you know, I don't want anyone to know where I live. Here is the peace sign, which God speaks to me through, right? There's... The starfish, infinite divine love, have peace, right? He likes to use this. I, in the past, I thought it was wrong, but he will use it. Have peace because of my infinite divine love. Rest in me. Pillows mean rest. And there's pom-poms, your cheerleader. Now look to the left. There's a store and it said Bella on it. I'm not going to show this the whole name of this store, okay? Because then people, I don't want people to know where I live. But it means the first part meant like I'm little. It means little in a different language. Bella. And let's see what was down, down there in the same store. A unicorn. Exalted, you like the horn of the unicorn. That's God. That's how high he is, that he does that. It's spiritually discerned. It's only for me because it's a gift for me. That's what he does. He hides things. You know what God was showing me? This was like, I think a week ago. There's this wrapping paper in my, in my dad's room. It was like in the sauna. My brother had taken it out and I went and I looked at the wrapping paper. God put my eye on it and I was looking at it and I was like, Wait, what? You know what's on the wrapping paper? This is what it looks like. The peace sign. And then it says superstar right there. And I was like, what? Best friends. Look, there's the blue butterfly, part of the blue butterfly. The pink one. Best friends have peace. Girls rule. <laughs> it's him. I know people will think I'm foolish for saying that, but I have to just do what he wants. And I know it's him. That's how high he is. He showed me that. I was looking at it because, you know, he speaks to me through the peace sign and the blue butterflies on it, like part of the wing and the, the, the pink one. And, and then it said superstar. I was like, what? What's the, what is that video God made me? By Shiny. What's the name of it? Superstar? It's him. You see, the level Christ has put me at, it's like a high spiritual level. It's very hard for people to get at the level I'm at. And I say that with no pride whatsoever. I know it's because of his refinement upon me. So I can see and I can hear from him very well and because of my level of repentance and because of how I seek him. So he wants me to teach people these things. There are people who know he speaks through symbols, I'm sure, and stuff, but it's a hard level for people to get to. He wants me to show people these things to glorify himself. Guess what else with the wrapping paper? Minnie and Mickey were there near it. I was like, what? It's him. 
You see, he wants to give us mercies. Very important to learn his mercies. I think I was afraid of Disney for years after I came to God. Do people think being afraid of Disney cartoons is, is a character of Jesus Christ? That's, that's his character? Do you think he's afraid of that? No. That's from Pharisees. And I told him after he showed me these things, I was like, I will never be afraid of Disney ever again or the television. I'm free. And he wants me to free his children from these things. Speaks through it. Now, does Jesus Christ like Disney in general? There's things in Disney he doesn't like because they try to mock him and promote like witchcraft and stuff. But then he'll put things in there to glorify himself and mock Satan. He likes to do that. And it's not real witchcraft. It's just like a fake power thing. It's a copycat of his power. Satan is so, he's not creative in any way. He can only copy God. God is the creator. God makes beautiful things through humans and creation. Satan can only copy him. That's why Satan uses a pentagram, which is a five-pointed star, to copy God's starfish, which God uses. You see? Or the butterfly. Butterflies are God's thing. But then Satan tries to use the butterfly. But anytime God's showing me the butterfly, it's God doing it. It's, he's so high that even if people are trying to use it for evil, he uses it for good. So the point is we must endure until the end. God showed me very strongly. He showed me, you're the one that I approve of. You're the girl I approve of. And the girl I approve of has to be tough. That's what he showed me. And I was like, man. And that he believed in me, that I could do it and make miracles happen. It was very touching. And I know it's him. He believes in you that you can do it too. We can't give up no matter what because this is why we're made to glorify him. So keep on the narrow road with him and endure until the end and smile because of his mercies. All right, love you guys. Bye.